about every aspect of training here. If we're teaching a dog to find narcotics, his reward is a ball. And the ball has value because the dog has prey room and the ball moves quickly and it's exciting and it's fun for him to bite and play with and chase. So they're motivated to find the narcotics odor because their paycheck is a ball. And they value a ball like you or I value a lottery ticket, <laughs> a winning lottery ticket. Um, so when a dog has this, we shape and manipulate this behavior to our advantage to get it to do all the things that we need it to do. Um, from this, we will we'll go to a rag and, and use the same prey drive, uh, but now we teach more correct gripping technique and we build a desire for a dog that wants to bite. I, there's a lot of puppies that I can get excited about this, but as they get older, uh, we start to ask more and more of them and tap into this drive a lot deeper. Yeah. And a dog with that type of intensity will go out and hunt till he till he's dead for for a game, just for the opportunity to put his mouth on a toy. Or if I tell him, "Hey, you're allowed to get excited because we're going to go find somebody to bite," he'll hunt till the sun goes down for the opportunity to bite somebody. Yeah. Because it means that much to him. Yeah. The, these are called scent training walls, and the idea is we use these to imprint dogs on target odor. And when I say target odor, that simply means the odor that we're training the dog, you know, his job is now going to be finding target odor X, whether it's narcotics or explosives or human remains or whatever it may be. Uh, but essentially, we, every one of these holes represents a potential hiding place for the, for the odor. So if we take target odor and we plug it in to one of these receptacles, and then we ask the dog to search, he searches the wall. When he comes into the odor, that we're trying to teach him to find, in this case, uh, narcotics. Um, when the dog comes in and gives us the indication that we're looking for, we can reward that dog right directly over top of the source of the odor. So the dog's nose is gonna be here on the other side of the wall. Uh, we'll, we'll reward him here so he can play with the toy. We'll play a game of tug of war right here over top of the odor and reward him. Remember I said out there, you know, we look for dogs that have that really high play drive, prey, prey drive for, for a toy. Uh, if they don't have a, it, like a ridiculous degree of intensity for a toy, they're never going to search for an extended period of time for the toy. So we pair the reward with the target odor, meaning we teach them that every time they come into the target odor, there's always a, a game. There's always a toy available. There's always a game. Uh, we keep it fun and exciting. So we motivate them to continue to look for target odor because every time they find that, they get they get that a game. They get a they get the toy for the mm -hmm. reward. So you see when he comes into there, he locks up. He gets a little game of tug right here by the hole. Okay, I'm going to let him have it. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll do a couple repetitions on each hole with the young dog. And then I'll even try to like, really try to lure him away. He knows this ball is here. But he, he learns to ignore the ball on his. So this is a dog that will not false and say, "Hey, even though my paycheck is a tennis ball, you can have a trunk full of tennis balls. He'll never show any interest in it unless it has a bomb in it too." And again, he's really young. He's just learning this. So go ahead, and take him out. Go ahead, take him away. I'm gonna take oh, okay. a picture. Okay. Yeah, they haven't found any. This hole. You can obviously you can see that ball in there, mm -hmm. and then the dog can see that ball in there as well. But he can't get to it. He can't bite it and play with it. He learns to ignore it. Yeah. So I can have a ball in every single hole here, and he learns to ignore it. We can have balls laying around on the ground where they can pick them up. They learn to ignore them because those are not the ones that have value. I can stand right here and tease him with the ball. You know, if, if he's if he's indicating the odor is in this hole right here, I can stand here and tease him with the ball. Hey, hey, and even hit him with it. Hey, come over here and play with the ball. He's learned to ignore that. He knows this is the only way he can get the ball. Yeah. It's from, directly from the source. Huh. Uh, he's learned that because a thousand times he's seen that ball and said, hey, I want to go get that ball, and I always take it from him. And he's learned he can never get it. He uh -huh, never has okay. success until he goes to the right to the right hole. Okay, so if he accidentally gets it, you aren't quick enough, and he accidentally gets it, then that's... If he, well, 
and you can make mistakes, and then we, oh, okay. of course that happens. Okay. What what doesn't happen is if he accidentally if he beats me and he gets it immediately, yeah. there's no game. He takes it he takes it away. The handler chokes him off of it. There's no game of tug of war. Oh, okay. It's not only the pleasure of having the ball; it's the pleasure of the game of the fighting of getting to keep it and, and cha me challenging him over it that makes it fun for him. Yeah. So if he beats us in training, and it does happen sometimes. We just let him have it. Now it's a dead ball. It's not nearly as much fun as the ball that's associated with the odor because that's where the fight comes from. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they'll learn to ignore all these dead balls that are laying on the ground. They just walk over top of them because the, the only ball that matters is the one that's connected mm -hmm. to the source. That's right. Right. This is what we're rewarding them with, just pieces of that. I just cut them up in pieces small enough that I can actually poke it through the hole there. It's over there. Hit. I'm going to kind of stand here and purpose. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, pulling back, Meredith. The ball or the hot dog. Uh, right? Unfortunately for them, they've kind of become conditioned. When our dogs come out of the kennel, uh, we, we don't really have pets here, so they come out of the kennel, they get loaded up into the transport vehicle, whether it's a dog trailer or, or a truck or whatever. We take them to the training site. They walk in the door of that training building looking. They're, they're searching immediately when they walk in, um, even when we don't ask them to. Sometimes I feel bad when I am, if I take our dogs to the vet, they walk in the vet clinic and immediately start searching around the room unless I stop them. I kind of feel bad for that because there's obviously not, we're not, this is not a training scenario. We're not going to find anything. But they also have to learn to work negatives, meaning to work blanks, rooms that, that don't have odors in them. Mm -hmm. So I just try not to ask them, you know, we never ask them to search on their own unless we're going to, going to get them to search. But they become so conditioned on their own to, Hey, we walk in a building, I know what happens next. We're searching for something. And there's really no way around that. But So the, the importance of proofing a dog off of a tennis ball, for example, if we use a tennis ball as the dog's reward, uh, it's also imperative that we proof him off of that tennis ball so he's not searching just for the tennis ball. One example of how you can see how important that would be, let's just say, for example, we have a bomb dog doing security sweeps at the Wimbledon. And every, every parking lot or every car in that parking lot probably has, uh, you know, a tennis fan uh, driving it. You know, and there's probably tennis balls in every car there. If I'm going to, if I have a dog that's not been proofed off of his reward, and his reward in most cases is something like a tennis ball, if he goes through that parking lot and he indicates on a vehicle, we're going to have to evacuate every spectator at Wimbledon. We're going to have to call in the bomb squad. We're going to have to spend a lot of taxpayers' money and a lot of time and effort and create panic throughout the whole place so we can have somebody pop the trunk and find a bucket full of tennis balls. Uh, you can see where that's problematic. So we proof the dogs off of every odor except for pure target odor. Things open up so we can put a lot of odor in those. Um, these, these desks we have throughout regular drawers. Any place that you would, if you were going to go into an operational environment, a schoolhouse or something, where would you find potentially, you know, contraband? So immediately he wants to play. He's looking for a game already. But this is the difficult part. Finding the gun is so tricky. He can play with that on his own, but wants to have that in his mouth just for fun. focus and commitment to, to try to figure out how to get If there was 10 of them there, he'd want to get 10 of them. So when we start training him, come here. When we start training him on target, 
That same commitment to find that toy is what makes him hunt like hell for 30 years. Yeah. So we're trying to retrain some things here and teach the dog it's not about ripping and tearing. You know, if I have to deploy my dog on a suspect, the more damage he does, the more my city has to pay for it. So I want my dog to bite full and hard and calm and contain that guy without doing a ton of bodily damage. I don't want him to rip his face off and open his belly up. And all those things happen sometimes anyway. But I want, ideally, I want my dog to bite very hard and very calm and not, not do a lot of, of other damage you know, to, the, to the suspect. You know, this is a, it's, it's an escalating use of force. You know, this is, I'm not trying to kill the If I wanted the guy dead, I'd pull my gun on him. We're not trying to kill this, this suspect. We're just trying to apprehend him in the safest way. This is exactly, this is, he didn't respond to my verbal communication. He's, he's already assaulted another officer, so we're not going to go in there and try to, you know, and try to get into a fight with him. Perhaps. I'm going to try to get him on the lower body this time. See when he pushes in? He's winning.